This recent poll by the Shelton Group uh, found that 60% of Americans are trying to become green consumers, that they understand that in your everyday life, you've got to walk the talk if we're going to solve these problems. Unfortunately, what the Sheldon Group uh, also learned was that most Americans who are making green purchases think that natural is better than organic, you know, and that all natural uh, is, is really top of the line. And so we've got this major problem uh, of like, we should be at 12% of the market right now in terms of all the purchases at the grocery store level, in terms of the intention of consumers who are desperately trying to do the right thing and are willing to pay more money to do the right thing. You know, but they have been confused by a conscious disinformation campaign carried out by large corporations uh, that understand that it's much cheaper to buy a conventional product greenwash it as natural, and then sell it uh, just about at a, at a premium price, almost as expensive as organic. We have to put an end to this. We've got a demand of our retailers, our co-ops, our wholesalers, our, our favorite brands, that there should be no product labeled as natural unless it's in transition to organic, because there's no such thing as natural. Natural is just conventional that's greenwashed, okay? So, well, a, 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 a pessimist would then say, well, okay, so then we'd be at 12% of grocery store sales if we transform natural into transition to organic and it's going to organic. Well, obviously, we still have the other 88% of uh, food and farming uh, that are chemical intensive, energy intensive, inhumane, uh, carpetized and uh, basically posing a mortal threat to our health, to the survival of the planet. Um, what are we going to do there? Okay, let's back off a minute. Um, there's some major factors about to come down. It's not too pleasurable to think about them, so you know most of us survive day to day by not thinking about them. But we are stepping into an era now of uh, erratic weather, obvious climate change, uh, scientists are screaming at the top of their lungs that we're at 387 parts per million of greenhouse pollutants, that if we don't get this back down below 350 ASAP, we're going to have disaster on our hands. Okay? We are going to have to deal with the climate crisis. That's all there is to it. Mother Nature is not going to let us ignore that. Uh, the second thing is the energy crisis. We have reached, or will soon reach, what's called peak production of oil, natural gas, other, other uh, fossil fuels. Uh, there's no way around this. It's a country like Mexico, where I spend a lot of my time. Uh, energy, oil production decreased 9% last year. And this is pumping as hard as they can. You look at other countries, our big suppliers, like Saudi Arabia and so on. They're pumping as hard as they can just to stay up with this demand. 87 million barrels of oil a day that we're consuming. The bottom line is that chemical intensive fertilizer, uh, really expensive GMO seeds, other chemical inputs, long distance food transportation and product transportation are not going to be viable much longer. So again, we have massive forces that are going to be coming into play. So that's what's so important about what we're doing today. This is not a hundred year process of, of gaining one or two points of market share every year. This is like 1942 again, you know, when there was almost no local production of fruits and vegetables in U.S. cities, and three years later it was 42 percent of the total. Uh, this is like 1942 when the government announced that, well, we're going to build zero cars in 1942 because we've got this tremendous threat of Nazism and we have to deal with this. So it's so important that we're creating these models uh, as in uh, uh, the Kickapoo area. It's very important we move toward local self-sufficiency, our food and farming models. Let's get this together because we're entering into an emergency period where we're going to have to go organic. We're not going to be battling 
Monsanto and the chemical companies over whether organic food and farming and relocalized food and farming systems are better. That argument is going to be over with. It's going to be a question of how quickly can we move to where this becomes the norm while we work with these broader movements to green up transportation, to green up housing, while we work as part of a global community to carry out this final organic revolution that's going to save us all. Thanks a lot.